Uh, hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, multiple random variables, how to describe the joint distribution of multiple discrete random variables. Uh, in particular, I gave some simple examples of joint PMF and uh, we looked at the scenarios and computed what the joint PMF will be. Okay. Now, we are going to start looking at marginal PMF. I sort of ended at the in the previous lecture by saying uh, when you have a lot of random variables, the joint PMF can become a very complicated object which you can't easily describe. So, you are looking for some simpler alternatives and this marginalization and conditional distributions are, uh, are, are very nice pathways to get to the joint distribution. Okay. So, let us start by looking at the marginal PMF. In particular, the individual marginal PMF is what I will start with and then uh, we will slowly generalize this. Okay? So, we are going to look at multiple discrete random variables. We also, <coughs> we already saw the marginal PMF in the context of two random variables. Now, we are going to increase the two to multiple. That is nothing more. Okay? So, so let us say you have n random variables x1, x2, xn and uh, these are distributed with some joint PMF f sub x1, x2, x3, right? So, something. And then uh, the, the PMF of the individual random variables are these individual marginal PMFs that we are interested in x1, x2 to xn. Okay? And we can quite easily see that uh, the PMF of x1 itself evaluated at some t okay, is going to be basically probability that x1 equals t. right? And it turns out you can find these marginal PMFs by summing over the joint PMFs for different ranges. What do you sum over? You basically sum over all that you do not want to keep. Okay? So, if you are looking at fx1, you have to sum over everything other than x1. Okay? So, the joint PMF of course, will depend on x1, x2 all the way to xn. So, you sum over the joint PMF. You can see here in the first formula there fx1 of t, I am summing over uh, t2 prime which is in the range of x2 t3 prime which is in the range of x3 all the way to tn prime which is in the range of xn. What am I summing? I am summing the joint PMF evaluated at t which is the value of x1 which I want to keep. So, I will not be summing over t, I want to keep that t and then everything else is all possible values. Okay? So, this is a very simple proof. The proof is very similar to what we did before. Basically, I am saying I want the probability that x1 equals t. I will write the event x1 equals t as x1 equals t and x2 equals t2 prime and x2 e x3 equals t3 prime and 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 so on and simply add up over all possible values for t2 prime, t3 prime, t4 prime and all that. So, that is exactly what it is. It is a very simple formula except that you know when you execute it sometimes it can become a bit, bit confusing. But keep this rule in mind. Okay? When you marginalize everything that you do not want, you keep only what you want, you get the marginal PMFs. Okay? So, when you go to x2, what will you do? You will keep x2 alone and then put variables for all the other random variables, sum over all of them, you get the marginal PMF of x2, so on. Okay? So, that is the multiple uh, discrete random variable marginalization. Okay? So, let us see a few examples as before, we have always been seeing examples. Okay? So, let us look at an example. Uh, I am going to toss a fair coin thrice. It is a fair coin and x1 is the indicator for the first toss being heads as usual x2, x, x1, x2, x3 are 1 and 0 for the first toss, second toss, third toss respectively. We have seen the joint PMF before. This is just uh, 1 by 8. If you want to look at the marginal say fx1 evaluated at 0, notice what I am doing here. I am keeping the 0 uh, fixed. So, let us maybe use some of the color here uh, blue. Okay. I am keeping the 0 as uh, x1 throughout okay? and uh, the other guys are varied across uh, you know you marginalize it out. So, you, you, so you look at uh, you look at these guys it is 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1 all possible values I just sum over all of them and they are all 1 by 8. So, 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 you get 1 by 2. Okay, the same thing for f x 1 of 1 and you get uh, you know you sum over all these things. So, you keep 1, one fixed for x 1 and everything else you vary and you simply add it up you get half. Okay, so, it is easy enough. Okay, hopefully, this is easy enough to execute. So, this is a very simple problem and you see how the marginals work out. If, if you do x 2 also you will get the same answer, x 3 also you will get the same answer. Of course, we knew the distribution of x 1, x 2, x 3 before. It is not very uh, difficult to do this. Okay. Let us go to our uh, slightly more interesting example of uh, you know this 0, 0, 0 to 999 
uh, x is the first digit from left, y is uh, you know the number modulo 2 and z is the first digit from the right. Okay. So, in this case you might say okay I will have to sum up over all the joint PMF, but really you know the marginal is directly and easily you can write it down there is no need to you know sum over the uh, joint PMF or anything. If you look at the first digit from the left what is the probability that the first digit is going to be equal to 0, what is the probability that it is going to be equal to 1 etc. You will see all of them is 1 by 10 right. Uh, there are 10, there are 100 out of the 1000 cases which are favorable for every particular first digit right from the left. If, if you want the first digit to be 0, you have 000 to 099 okay. So, that is 100 favorable out of the overall 1000. So, you get 1 by 10. So, it is easy to quickly see that x is uh, uniform from 0 to 9. So, you see quite often to find the marginal PMF from an experiment, you may not have to do the you know summation and the marginalization very painfully. Uh, directly, you may be able to deal with the marginalization. Okay? So, that is something that is important to remember as well. Do not go finding the joint PMF all the time. You may be able to quickly find, directly find the marginal. Likewise, y uh, is the number modulo 2. Okay? So, y is going to be 0 if the number is even and 1 if the number is odd. Okay? And exactly 500 out of these 1000 numbers are even, the other 500 are odd. Okay? So, if you only care about even or odd, you know it is going to be uniform in 0, 1. Right? So, it is 500 by 1000. So, it is uniform in 0, 1. Same thing with z. Right? z is going to be uniform uh, 0, 1 to 9. It is the last digit, you know, the units place digit that is also uniform from 0 to 9. So, so quite often the marginal may be actually quite easy to find. Uh, you may not have to worry uh, too much about adding up over the joint PMF and all that. Okay? So, let us come to this very interesting case. We have been talking about data a lot and practical examples, more complicated examples where you know the space is difficult to specify and all that and this IPL power play over 1, the first over of the power play is maybe a good example of such a situation. Okay. So, we will assume that this over has 6 deliveries and uh, there are cases where it has 7. So, let us say we just forget about the 7th delivery which we'll is consider the over to be the first 6 deliveries that are pulled. There is always be 6 deliveries in the over. So, we do that and x i is the, the number of runs scored in the ith delivery. Okay. So, that is the uh, variable we have been, we've been looking at it. Now, what do I do for the marginal distribution of xi? So, so if you remember, I gave you this example and I said the joint PMF of x1 to x6 looks formidable to calculate, right? It is formidable to not just calculate, even specify or write down or think about. It seems like it is all over the place. It, it, you may not be able to really uh, do something uh, very clear, but you will see interestingly, you can do something very reasonable for getting the marginal PMF of uh, the x1 to x6. It is not too bad. okay? Uh, like I mentioned, there are about 1500 IPL matches that have already happened, 1598. And if you tabulate the data from there, it is not too unreasonable to think of the marginal distribution of x1. So, let us see. Let, let me just show you how this works. Uh, we have seen before that with, I mean, you can take xi to belong to the set 0 to 8. It is very unlikely that more than 8 is going to happen. Uh, the trick is how to assign probabilities to these. Uh, values, right? How do we do this? It is we have never done something like this before, isn't it? Previously, it's always been some toy experiment. We've been able to, able to always, you know, sort of figure out what the probability should be, and uh, you know, how do you assign probabilities? M maybe you can guess from your experience of IPL matches uh, what is going to be the most probable run scored. Let's say in the first ball, uh, mostly the batsman is going to defend or something, right? So in the first ball, x1. Uh, it's it's very likely that the the zero is the dominant number. In fact, you may even guess that zero would be the most probable run that somebody scores of a delivery. Right? Most cases, maybe it's zero. Okay, a boundary can happen. Uh, but how do we assign probabilities? What are, what is a meaningful way to assign probability? So traditionally, what people do this is again uh, this is uh, this is probably not the best method, and uh, but but it's a reasonable method and it is not too bad. Okay? So, you can go, go out and collect the data in the past occurrences. So, there has been like I said 1598 matches uh, where the first over has been bowled so far and you go and see in ball 1 what happened as in how many times uh, 0 runs were scored in, and so it turns out in 957 matches 0 runs were scored. Look at the large fraction. right? 
and one run was scored in 429 matches together that covers a large variety of you know large number a significant number and then you have two runs in 57 matches uh, three runs in five matches and four boundary seems to be more popular right 138 matches and then five runs in you know eight matches six runs in uh, four matches that's it uh, so far looks like nobody has bowled a no ball and been hit for a six in the first ball right so you don't have seven or eight so so one of the ways is to assign probabilities in the same proportion as data right so maybe you want to say probability that x1 equals 0 is 957 by 1598 i'm not claiming once again that this is the best way or anything like that there's nothing like the best in these kind of things it, it seems reasonable right and there are good uh, reasons why this might be okay and we'll see later on why this might be a good way to assign uh, these kind of probabilities but let's and at least intuitively most of you would say yes that's that seems reasonable okay so you can do that now you can repeat this for ball 2 so notice how these numbers are large enough uh, you know i mean I, I would have liked to have 15000 matches then maybe these numbers all will be much much better okay and but but you know uh, somebody might say you know this has been only four matches where six was hit but you know there's been 1500 matches and i'm looking at only six possibilities so it's okay it, it seems like i have enough data it feels like i have enough data to make this statement I'm, I'm making a lot of loose statements here but these are important things to just think about you know I, i've seen enough matches to be able to comment about what happens in the first ball of an over it's not it's not very unreasonable okay so i have done this now i have taken all the balls the first balls have tabulated in how many matches uh, zero runs were scored how many matches one run was scored in the first ball second ball third ball etc and i have put down the distribution in this little table here okay so you can see the marginals uh, one is able to think of in a reasonable way okay so maybe i want to assign a probability of 0 0.5989 to x1 being zero okay i want to assign a probability of 0.2685 this is again in proportion of uh, you know how many times in the past this has happened so maybe going forward this is a reasonable way to assign the probabilities and you can notice there are some subtle uh, differences right for instance a six is much more likely you know uh, some six to seven times more likely to be hit of the third or fourth ball okay the fourth ball seems to be uh, very uh, interesting for hitting six right and uh, you can also look at boundaries uh, again the fourth ball is much more likely uh, than than anything else uh, so in general uh, it seems very interesting and and it looks like zero is lowest in the last ball so almost uh, in the for the highest time on promotion of times uh, zero is uh, unlikely in the last ball but still more than 50 percent of the balls are uh, dot balls right uh, that's an interesting observation as well only for half the time across the matches uh, people hit it for runs okay so 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 you notice uh, I, I, I mean I'll, I'll keep coming back to this example over and over again uh, this week and in the coming in the next week also this this kind of a thing is very important uh, for data science and, and seeing the connection between uh, where the probability distribution is coming from where statistics will eventually come from and then at least where data is entering the picture in terms of coming up with something and, and i also want you to think about how uh, if you want to look at the joint pmf for all the six balls uh, 1598 matches is not good enough there are just too many cases and they all won't appear even one time or you can't really put anything down there meaningfully I, i'll come back and comment on it for you uh, later on as well but, but at least this much we're able to do the marginal with this kind of data we're able to easily write down so maybe the marginal is a good idea so let's see uh, what else we can do uh, with this data going forward okay so so what is the moral of the story moral of the story is uh, in large problems when there are a lot of random variables marginals are your only way in which you're going to make progress okay so you, you can't can't deal with the joint pmf you have to look for smaller distributions and try to stitch them together and how we do that we will see in this lecture okay so let me now generalize a little bit okay uh, this is also important uh, let's say we have three random variables now and they have a joint distribution f x1 x2 x3 okay so i'm taking a very simple case just know we saw n random variables and all that let's just start with three right after two we should go to three so we're going to three uh, we've discussed individual marginal pmfs right so you've seen f x1 f x2 f x3 now what about what about f x1 x2 
this is the joint PMF of X1 and X2. It's a very reasonable object, isn't it? So, so just now I mentioned how the joint PMF of everything might be difficult, but what about joint PMF of X1 and X2, right? It doesn't seem uh, that bad and it's a very valid object and can we say something about that? And likewise, X1, X3, X2, X3, okay? So there's some meaning in this and it seems uh, reasonable to think of these pairwise uh, distributions, for instance, when you have three random variables and not just the entire joint PMF. So, so it turns out this is very much possible and you can do it exactly like before, the principle being when you want to marginalize, keep only what you want and sum over everything you don't want. Okay, so that's, that's the principle of marginalization, isn't it? So if I want x1, x2, right, I want to find the joint PMF of x1, x2. I'm given the joint PMF of the whole thing, let's say fx1, x2, x3 I have, right? I'm, I'm trying to marginalize and find fx1, x2. How do I do that? fx1, x2 of t1, comma t2 is the probability that x1 equals t1 and x2 equals t2. And simply, you know, you add over all possible values for x3 you're going to get this guy, right? So that's the formula that's given there. Sum over all T3 prime in the range uh, T X3, the joint PMF T1, T2, T3. So given the joint PMF, you can always go to the marginals, right? In this fashion and the marginals need not be individual random variables. They can even be pairs of random variables, X1, X2, X1, X3. What do you do for X1, X3? You sum over T2 prime, which is the, which will, which will be this uh, variable that, uh, that is in the range of X2, T X2 you sum over all possibilities for x2, you will get fx1, x3. Same thing with x2, x3, you sum over all possibilities for x1, right? So it's very simple uh, extension, right? So we started with the entire joint PMF and then we said maybe the marginals are interesting. We looked at the individual marginals. Now we have pairwise marginals and you can now extend to other situations. Okay, so basically this principle is important to remember. Whenever you want to marginalize, you keep what you want, sum over everything you don't want and you get a marginalization. Okay, so here's uh, example, I mean this is a simple enough example so that I can uh, do this for you. Uh, so if you do uh, x1, x2, right, so let's let's first marginalize some back here over f x1, x2, I'm going to have t1, t2, right, uh, t1 takes value 0, 1 and t2 takes value 0, 1, okay. So if you want to do uh, f x1, x2 of 0, 0, so this guy, right, what will this be? So maybe I should use different colors. So I should use blue. Okay. So zero zero is blue. So you have uh, zero zero here, zero zero here, zero zero here. Okay. And uh, T three, I have to sum over all possibilities for T three. Okay. So if I do that, I have to add one by nine plus one by nine plus one by nine, and that will be just one by three, isn't it? So let's look, change color to look at 0, 1. If I, if I look at, oh no, no, 0, 1 would be x1 equals 0 and uh, this guy, this position. And uh, that is 0, 1 and 0, 1, isn't it? So you fix t1 to 0, t2 to 1, and then sum over all possible values for t3. There's only 1 and 2, okay? It's 1 by 9 plus 1 by 9, I'll get 2 by 9, okay? Let's change to some other color. It's orangish color uh, for 1, 0. So you have 1, 0 here. Okay, that's again 1 by 9 plus 1 by 9. That's 2 by 9. And then uh, one can change to, I don't know, magenta or something like that for this 1, 1. And that's again another 2 by 9. Okay, so this is my joint PMF F x1, x2. Okay. So one can do also other uh, joint PMFs. Let's say you want to do, I'll just do one more. Let's say we do x1, x3, okay, just for variety. We have t1 here and t2 here. Remember now t2 can take three values, okay. So t1 is just 0, 1. This is 0, 1, 2, okay. So you have six possibilities here. I'm not going to bother with the colors, okay. Bear me for that, okay. Bear with me for that. So I want x1, 0 and x3, 0, okay, so 0, 0, okay, so maybe the first one alone, uh, let's look at this in black, so this is 0, 0, uh, that's it, that's the only possibility, okay, so x1 is 0, x3 is 0, it's just 1 by 9, okay, so x1, x1 is 0, x3 is 1, is uh, 0, 1, that can happen here, that's 1 by 9, 1k is 0, 1, 
Okay, so you got 0, 1 here, 0, 1 here. That's a two possibilities and that's 2 by 9. Okay. What about 0, 2? 0, 2 is okay. 0, 2 is uh, out here, it's out here. Okay, so 0, 2 is again 2 by 9. Okay, and then you have uh, you know x, uh, x1 is 1 and x2 is 0. Uh, that is again just one possibility, okay, no two possibilities. Okay, so maybe I should put a star here and a star here, right? 1, 0, 1, 0. So you get a 2 by 9 star. And then uh, you have 1, 1 being just one possibility and 1, 2 being just one possibility. I have just 1 by 9, 1 by 9. Okay, notice how the marginalization is working and how we are able to do it very easily uh, given the table. Right, that's it. It's a simple enough uh, calculation to do. Of course, when the numbers become bigger, the probability problem becomes more complex. Uh, these things are difficult to do, but you know, at least for simple toy problems, uh, the basic probability one can do uh, this very clearly. Okay. All right. So I thought I'll put one sheet here for working, but I really don't need to work. It's it's clear enough what I have to do. Okay. So let's go to slightly more. So we did two random variables, three random variables. The next logical thing is four random variables, right? I, I'm just trying to show you that you can have all sorts of variety here. Again, the same principle. You sum over everything you don't want. If you want, uh, you know, f x one, the marginal of x one from the joint, you sum over t two prime, t three prime, t four prime. You want x one, x two, you sum over t three prime, t four prime. You want x two, x four. You sum over t1 prime t3 prime okay from the all all possibles of x1 and all possibility of x3 you want the joint pmf of x1 x3 x4 right three of them then you sum over t2 prime over x2 that's it it's as simple as that so from the joint pmf going to marginals is a very simple one way process this multiple things don't happen there it's very easy okay but we already know from marginals you can't uniquely go to the joint pmf and therein lies the variety in data science okay all right, so let's see uh, what, uh, so I think that's it. I, I don't know, I don't think I have more worked out examples for you. That's good enough, I think. So in general, here is a general formula. I don't want to beat around this formula. You read it and understand. So if you have n different random variables, you want to take any subset of the random variables, i1, i2, ik, and want to do marginalization, you simply sum over everything except for i1, i2. So you can see start from 1, go till i1 minus 1, then jump to i1 plus 1, go, go like that. Skip, keep only ti1 to tik, sum over everything else, you're done, right? So that's the way to go from joint PMF to marginal PMF in the general case, okay? So I think that concludes uh, marginal PMF. Uh, the next big topic is conditioning with multiple random variables. That will, that we'll do in the next lecture.